<laughs> so I always like when a, when a speaker says, before I start, I'd like to begin with something. <laughs> like they're giving a, uh, a preamble. So I feel that way now. I want to give a preamble before I move into my prepared remarks, which was that at, uh, on Shabbos, we pre we're saying the same words every week. But for me, when something jumps out and captures me, then I know that's my Shabbos, right? That it might be words of the liturgy, which are the same words that we said the week before and we'll say the next week, but it might be a theme that jumps out. It might be one of the commentaries around the edges. And sometimes it might even be something that we say up here that really has an insight. And so at around 9.30 in the service, few of you were here, so I am going to repeat it for you, but I found the, the piece that was really jumped out for me, and it was the Chazan who just said, as a matter of fact, there was just a few of us here. I mean, there was, let's say there, there was a minion, but there wasn't two minions of people here, and he said, if we just started the day not looking at our phone when we first woke up, scrolling emails or looking at, at news reports or things like that, and we read poetry to start our day, what a different energy it would bring to our day. And he said that that's actually what the Sidor is, it's poetry, and so if we think of it like that, if we want to start our day with a different energy and a different kind of habit, start with poetry. You'll spend the rest of your day differently, whether it's liturgical poetry or any of your favorite poets that you have. So thank you for that, because it really is so true. It feels, our day would feel differently. So it touches me also because it's what I'm thinking about also. So I like proverbs, like small p proverbs. Yes, there is the book of Proverbs from the Tanakh, but also lower P Proverbs, like sayings, little quips that feel like they might show up in a fortune cookie. And I have a, a few for us to unpack a little bit. And my reliable source for these cultural origins is from the internet. So it must be true. Like when I say it's a Chinese saying, I have no idea if it's actually a Chinese saying, but the internet said so. Habits are cobwebs at first, cables at last. Okay, habits are cobwebs at first and cables at last. What does that mean? How a habit is at first a cobweb and then a cable. Yeah, at first, it's as fragile as a cobweb, but when you keep doing it, then it becomes strong. It becomes a strong practice for good things or for bad things, right? It just, like you said, it just is what you do, right? That's terrific, thank you. Other thoughts about that one? I got other ones too, so don't worry. Don't, don't use up all of your participation at once. So here's a Latin saying. I thought that might be good for this crowd but I'm gonna say it in English um, because I would definitely be graded down uh, on this. So, but um, there's a Latin saying according to the internet, the habits of our youth accompany us in old age. The habits of our youth accompany us in our old age. What does that mean? Yeah. Oh, I know that, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, that it's easiest to acquire a habit when you're young, you just are absorbing everything, and that stays with us throughout our life, was shared, um, and that even you, in stressful times, you revert back 
to those ways as a kid. Like for example, when a kid comes home from college and all of a sudden, you know, they want to be independent, but they're acting in the same way. And it moves, I have two kids in college, so I can appreciate this. But even though my sisters and I are, we're all in our 50s, when we're together somehow, you know, the alpha person always steps forward, and then the other two make fun of that person for thinking that they're the alpha person. But I won't talk about my sisters in that, in that way. But right, but the, the habits that we have as a kid, those are the habits that we have, um, and they're strong for the, rest of, for the rest of our life. So, and then from the book of Proverbs itself, it says, don't make friends with people who have a hot or violent temper. You might learn their habits and not be able to change. That's from the book of Proverbs. So what's that one, what's that one mean? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Right, yeah, please. I love it. You have to surround yourself with good people because those will be the habits that you pick up from good people. If you're around someone who's mad all the time, you are more likely to learn about how to be mad. If you're around someone who is good and generous and kind and sees the best in others, you're going to acquire that habit as, as well. It's terrific. So what is the main message? It is that I think how we act in small ways, the small habits that we have, is going to train us on how we act in big moments. Right? The small things that we do that cause us to acquire a habit is what we are going to do and act at big moments. So small acts of kindness build our muscle memory to do larger acts of kindness. So much of life is about building muscle memory, even kindness. It's funny how we all expect that we will act from our best selves without any training of ourselves to act that way. It is like showing up at a marathon and expecting to win the whole thing, to be the best person without any training. Well, it doesn't happen at a marathon, and it also doesn't happen in our moral lives. Morals and ethics are practiced and refined and learned and grown into over time. It is when they become habits that we prepare ourselves to act automatically. We carry the idea of generosity around with us as an ideal, but it takes repetition to make it a habit. There is a Greek saying, according to the internet, character is habit long continued. Character is habit long continued. Right? The things that we do over and over turn from habit into the, our own character of person. Habits are indicators of our character. Dr. Erica Brown, who is the Vice Provost of Values and Leadership at Yeshiva University and also holds the title, title of Director of the Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs Herrenstein Center of Values and Leadership and also an active member of the Washington DC Jewish community and an amazing educator and person. She has taught something that's important to this. She writes, our Parsha and more, this week's Torah reading, demands that the priestly class in particular be very careful about their conduct, especially when it comes to managing donations of the temple. God spoke to Moses saying, instruct Aaron and his sons to be scrupulous about the sacred donations that the Israelite people consecrate to me, lest they profane my holy name. Vayin Saru, to be scrupulous. Rashi explains that the root of fastidious care is nezer, means to distance oneself or set oneself apart. He uses two biblical proof texts to support his explanations from both Ezekiel and from Isaiah. We recognize this word from Nazir, the ascetic who refrains from certain behaviors to live a less worldly existence. He sets himself apart. Nezer also refers to a crown around the head and the Nazarite, you can hear the root in each of these words, the Nazarite doesn't cut his hair, perhaps to bring attention to the role the mind plays in self-sanctification. 
So Erica Brown continues one passage in the Talmud explains that scrupulous behavior was also expected of those who collected funds at the Beit HaMikdash, our holy temple, to cover the cost of offerings. So the coin gatherer was not allowed to wear clothes with cuffs. He was also not allowed to wear shoes or sandals, even tefillin or amulets, all places where coins might be hidden from view. So having authority and exposure to a lot of money can tempt even the most scrupulous people. So avoid suspicion and take every precaution not to arouse suspicion. The Talmudic passage concludes with a verse from Proverbs, find favor and approval in the eyes of God and humans. She says, speaking of endings, our chapter in a more our reading this morning ends where it begins. You shall faithfully observe my commandments. I am, you shall not profane my holy name that I may be sanctified in the midst of the Israelite people. I, God, who sanctify you, I, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God, I, the Lord. Who it is not easy to know what it means to sanctify God's name and to not profane it, it might all come down to one question. Does every small action of ours, does everything that we do reflect uprightness, reflect the sacred? It's those small habits, it's those small acts that we can be greater than ourselves or we can lower ourselves. I think that what Dr. Brown is teaching is that being fastidious in the small moments guides us to make better choices in the larger moments. She concludes with something from Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. She says in, in Rabbi Sachs's book, Morality, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs explains bad behavior can easily become contagious, but so can good behavior and it usually wins out in the long run, to your point. So small acts of kindness matter. They may matter for the receiver, but just as powerfully, I believe that small acts of kindness matter because they shape our own character. Holding a door, offering your seat to someone, extending help, listening to the person you were talking to, and more. For some today, these might seem like old values. And maybe they are. But we should still expect this of each other and of ourselves. The same website claims that there's a Mex Mexican saying, a tree that grows crooked will never be straightened. Bad habits learned early in life are hard to get rid of later. I think it's true. So Amor teaches us to be careful about our conduct. This is a message for young people and gray hairs like myself. It teaches us that even small actions prepare us for how we should take larger actions later. Kindness, generosity, humility, empathy, and more must all become our habits because then they will become our character. Therefore, let's be aware and intentional of our actions, even when nobody is looking, because this is how we build our habits. So may each of us habitually strive to be our best selves. May we brush ourselves off when we fall short, hold ourselves accountable, and keep trying when we fail, because that is a matter of character as well. Shabbat Shalom.